This video is a quick introduction to magnetic fields and to how we describe magnetic fields and some of the terminology we use. You probably already have some experience with magnets. Almost everybody has played with magnets as a child. So hopefully you've had some of that experience and very little of what I say is going to surprise you in terms of the actual physical behavior of magnets. What might be surprising is some of the terminology, but maybe not. So basically what we're going to cover in this video is the interaction between magnets, specifically magnetic poles. So we describe the interaction of magnets in terms of magnetic fields, just as we describe the interaction between electric charges in terms of electric fields. Magnetic fields are not the same as electric fields, but a lot of the terminology that we developed for electric fields we can use for magnetic fields. As you've probably already experienced, magnets can both attract and repel other magnets. The way we conventionally interpret this is to say that the parts of magnets that repel each other have the same polarity, they're the same poles. The parts that attract each other have opposite polarity, they're opposite poles. Opposites attract, likes repel. So for instance, two north poles of a magnet will repel each other, as you can see quite well. Two south poles repel. A north and a south pole will attract, as does a south and a north pole. Just as there are two kinds of electric charges, positive and negative, there are two kinds of magnetic poles, north and south. The conventions for drawing magnetic fields as magnetic field lines are pretty much the same as we had for electric fields as electric field lines. We draw field lines that explain a force, and what we're looking at here is the force on a magnetic north pole, just as with electric field lines, we were looking at the force on an electric positive charge. Also, just as with electric fields, magnetic fields are strongest where the field lines are close together. So the main difference between magnetic fields and electric fields is what they're acting on. Electric fields act on electric charges, magnetic fields act on magnetic poles. Spoiler, they also act on electric charges, but in a way that's a little bit complicated, and we'll talk about that soon. Not in this lesson, though. Since magnetic field lines show the direction of the force on a north pole, the field lines are going to point away from magnetic north poles, and they're going to point toward magnetic south poles, because north poles repel other north poles, and south poles attract north poles. A compass needle is a small dipole magnet, and it orients itself in the direction of a magnetic field. So a compass is a convenient device to use to map out a magnetic field. Here we can see around this dipole magnet that the magnetic field really is as depicted in the previous magnetic field diagram. Given that, I'd like you to consider what the magnetic field line should look like in the vicinity of two bar magnets. So these are two dipoles arranged in this way so that the north and south poles of the different magnets are adjacent to each other. Sketch this on your own and then come back and I'll walk you through what my answer is to this. Recall magnetic field lines go from north to south poles. Pretty amateurish drawing, but you get the idea that the lines are pointing from north to south poles, away from north poles, and toward south poles. How are the magnetic poles named? Well, they're named north and south because of the north and south poles of the Earth. The north pole of a magnet 
is the north seeking end of the magnet. If a magnet is allowed to orient itself in the Earth's magnetic field, it will line itself up so that one pole is pointing toward the Earth's north and one pole is pointing toward the Earth's south. This isn't exact, it's approximate, but the north pole of the magnet is the pole that points north on Earth. So it's the north seeking end. So if we randomly displace the orientation of the magnet and release it, the magnet will receive a torque from the Earth's magnetic field. Over time, as it finally settles down to its preferred orientation, you can find out which way is north. That's what a compass does. A compass needle is a small magnet. About a half an hour has passed now and you can see that the uh, oscillation has attenuated a bit. Mostly it's pointing what I know to be north. So the magnet is eventually pointing north. We know that opposite poles attract and like poles repel, so the north pole of the Earth must be magnetically a south pole because it's attracting the north poles of magnets. Now another thing about magnets that you may be aware of if you've played with magnets as a child is what happens to a magnet if you break it between the north and south poles. Can you separate the poles? Do you make two smaller magnets, each with a north and south pole? Do you separate the poles so that you have a north magnet and a south magnet? Do you have one magnetic piece and one non-magnetic piece? Or is something else going on? Well, if this has ever happened to you, you probably know you will get two separate magnets. You'll create a new north pole on the other end of the south pole fragment and a new south pole on the other end of the north pole fragment. So far, we've never been able to isolate magnetic monopoles. So this is one way that magnets are very different from electric charges. Electric charges, we can separate positive and negative charge. If you rub a balloon with a piece of rabbit fur, the rabbit fur picks up a positive charge and the balloon picks up a negative charge. You can pull the balloon and the fur away from each other and you've separated the positive and negative charges. You can't do that with magnets. You can't pull the North Pole away from the South Pole and separate them. They're always together. There are two basic types of magnets. The first is an electromagnet, which is just what it sounds like. It's a magnet made by electricity, in particular electric current. You have to run a current through the magnet. So there are coils of wire that conduct an electric current. And because of this, you can turn the magnet on and off. When the current is flowing, the magnet is on. It's a magnet. When the current is not flowing, either it's not a magnet or it's much weaker. Then there are permanent magnets. You stick things to your refrigerator with them and so on. These are magnetic and they don't require an application of an electric current. They're just intrinsically magnetic materials. They maintain a magnetic field without having a power source. Iron magnets, neodymium magnets, alnico magnets maintain a magnetic field without the application of an electric current. There are all sorts of applications for these.